One of the greatest inventions that came about during the turn of the 21st century, at least in my humble opinion, was the magic of taking my most beloved hardware and turning it into software so that it could be enjoyed on the PC. What am I referring to? Stay tuned and find out. If you are just being introduced to the world of emulation, you probably want to sit down for this one because I'm about to blow your mind. Now the term emulation in itself just means to copycat, and that is exactly what several amazing programmers did when they decided to take the physical hardware of several beloved gaming systems and port them over to the PC in application form. These programs, known popularly as emulators, have had a profound effect in more ways than one as they have become not only a haven of nostalgia, but means of preservation for rare and very hard to find games of the past. Now as excited as you may be about the prospects of rekindling an old gaming flame that you had with a certain title in the past, there are a few things that you need to know before you dive all the way in. There are things that can potentially make this ride much smoother as you will come to find out that things are not as always as straightforward as we wish they could be. Emulators are often on an application per system basis, though there have been several milestones that have come about in the last few years that allow for more systems to come under one program, something I'll be getting into more details about in a later video. More importantly are the games that are available on each system which do not come with the emulator, ever. This is due to the legal nature of emulation, something that is pretty peculiar, but never mind that for now. Now games that work with each emulator are normally referred to as ROMs as they operate very much in the same nature as opening a basic Word document. It literally can be that easy, in most cases at least. Now I need to make it very clear, ROMs are basically illegal to own if you have not obtained them through a retailer distributed from a copyright owner. It has been a pretty heated debate with some arguing on the side of reduplication for backup or multi-use purpose while others see it as a direct violation of the company's copyrights. In other cases, additional things are required. For example, most LaserDisc-based systems require what is called a BIOS. For those unfamiliar with the term, the BIOS usually holds all of the hardware information of the computer-based system in software form and is usually the first thing that your hardware looks for when it starts up. Certain emulators require the BIOS from the original hardware to operate and are usually obtained by a method known as dumping. Now, as you might have already guessed, the method of dumping a BIOS from your original hardware has a pretty big do-it-yourself factor, but it is honestly the only legit way to obtain it. It will ultimately be up to you on how you decide to go about getting your BIOS. Most of the users just end up searching the internet to obtain one. After all, as long as you own the hardware, that's what's important, right? So you have your ROM, you have your BIOS, everything should work, right? Well, that actually depends. Emulators can sometimes carry various formats that may require more than just a basic ROM. Case in point, CHDs. CHDs come from a special type of arcade hardware that utilized a special laser disc or hard drive for specific games in question. As a result, these games often require two sets of files and must be set up in a certain way. Now, we'll be covering all this in detail in later videos, but I just wanted to give you an overview so that terms I'm using are not foreign to you in the future. I also recommend if you are still learning how to use your computer that you check out my video on file management as it will be quintessential to your success with running emulators moving forward. For now, this is the Corey Resident Entertainment Techie signing out.